The Whips have agreed that the motion on adult social care will be taken next. Can I ask Councillor Jones to move and, the council, and Councillor Ambash to second the motion in their names? Councillor. I move the motion. Formally second. Madam. Councillor Carpenter. Okay, I'll start again. Mr. Mayor, why do we provide adult social care? There's a serious question. The majority of recipients of adult social care are coming towards the end of their lives. They are unlikely to make further economic contributions to society, so why should we spend money on them for no return? I have a modest proposal. We should kill off all those who qualify for adult social care, render them down their remains to make meat pies to feed those unfortunate enough to, to need food banks. I admit that these meat pies would not be as nutritious as Jonathan Swift's modest proposal to kill off all one-year-olds and make succulent roasts out of their bodies, a good alternative to turkey for Christmas. That proposal also had the advantage of nicking the problem in the bud by cutting out the 80 intervening years during which these babies might have become a burden on society. Mr. Mayor, the point that Jonathan Smith was making in 1729 was that the way we treat the vulnerable in our society is a measure of how civilized a society we are. That moral and ethical imperative remains true today. So, Mr. Mayor, in answer to my original question, we provide adult social care because we are a civilized society. But can we afford it? Karl Marx's famous dictum, from each according to his ability to each according to his needs, assumes that the economic pot is big enough to meet everyone's needs, not, I hasten to say, everyone's wants. The latest Office for National Statistics figures show UK GDP for 2015 as 1.8 trillion pounds, with a GDP per head of 28,000 pounds. This is somewhat ahead of the figures for France or Germany. I think that, unless we are Gordon Gecko or perhaps Donald Trump, we can safely say that the UK's economic pot is big enough to meet everybody's needs. But are the public prepared to pay for it? Last Sunday, I was knocking on doors in Southfields, one of our target wards for 2018. I told people about the debate on adult social care we're having tonight and asked them what their attitude was to increasing council expenditure on social care. Without exception, everyone supported increasing it. Indeed, some of the most enthusiastic were those who were not natural supporters of the Labour Party. So, Mr. Mayor, we have the moral imperative we have the economic means and we have the public support to increase our funding for social care. But do we have the political will? Currently, it seems not. Paper 1630 sets out the development budget for 2015 to 2019. Following a two million pound reduction in the older people and physical disabilities budget this year, a further reduction of one million is forecast for each of the next two years. This in the face of rising costs and rising demand for social care. Last year, we did not even specifically allocate the one million precept on council tax we raised for social care to the social care budget. Let me make it clear that on this side of the chamber, we will fully support the majority party should they seek to raise a further million pounds precept next year, provided that it goes towards reversing the planned further cuts in the adult care budget. The majority party also needs to be more imaginative in the way it procures social care. It should by now have learnt that a lowest common denominator, race to the bottom, 100% price-based procurement, is not an appropriate way to procure personal services for the most vulnerable. They are not paper clips or toilet rolls, where wholly price-based procurement may be appropriate. We need to pay attention to the quality as well as the price of our social care. Perhaps we will learn from our partners in Richmond who value quality as well as price. 
We should also consider whether we should insource some of our social care. With the reduction of care home places in London, prices are escalating, and it may now be cost effective for us to provide some of the social care services ourselves. If we insource some of these services, we'll become a more intelligent purchaser of the outsourced services, as we would have direct experience of running social care services ourselves. We should also remember that if we fail to provide good quality social care, we are storing up greater costs for the health and social care budgets in the long run. It is considerably cheaper to provide social care in someone's own home than to admit them to hospital care. The failure to properly integrate health and social care budgets has set up perverse financial incentives in both sectors, which, if followed, will in the long run cost both of them dear. In conclusion, Mr. Mayor, the provision of adult social care is one of the signs of a civilised society. The country has the economic capacity to deliver adult social care. We have the public support to expand provision and the financial means to deliver it. If the majority party can show the required political will, we, on this side of the House, will support them. Thank you. Councillor Mrs Clay. Thank you, Mr Mayor. There's one thing I agree with that Councillor Carpenter has just said. We have a moral as well as a statutory duty to look after the needs of our most vulnerable residents. Providing the highest quality of care is at the heart of everything this Council's Adult Social Services Department does. We can all agree on the fundamental truth and importance of this. If you're old and frail, the council will provide the help you need. If you're younger and disabled, the council will provide the help you need. If you're deaf or blind or mentally ill, the council will provide the help you need. There's no charge unless you can afford it. We don't often debate adult social care in this chamber. I love it when we do because it gives me a chance to bang the drum for carers and the first down project. You wouldn't expect anything else. If you're old and at risk of not being able to manage, you can go to open access day services like the first down project. The council supports these for everybody, rich and poor alike, because we know that well-planned preventative services enhance quality of life and will pay dividends in the future. If you're an unpaid carer looking after a loved one, the council will support you. There's no charge for this, however much you earn. All this costs council taxpayers an eye-watering amount of money. Most of it goes on support to those who can't help themselves. We don't have a choice over whether or not to provide this support. We have a statutory duty. Cost doesn't come into it. If someone needs a package of care costing hundreds of thousands of pounds a year, we pay and we do it willingly. The council legally has to balance the budget. By running a tight financial ship elsewhere, the Adult Social Services Department has an adequate budget. It's not easy, granted, but so far this year, it's running a minuscule surplus. The Council works in collaboration with countless agencies, too numerous to mention here. Suffice to say, thousands of people are paid to support those who need it. They are hard-working, dedicated, and kind people but sometimes they make mistakes. It's a foolhardy organisation that believes itself perfect. Indeed, it's a mark of a well-run organisation that it constantly checks its processes and learns lessons from its mistakes. I'm proud that Wandsworth's council officers are open and transparent about the complaints they receive. I'm proud that they are able to admit when they've got something wrong. I'm glad that they ran an in-house audit which shows that about 15% of the time they could probably do better. I'm particularly proud 
to chair an overview and scrutiny committee which contains thoughtful, intelligent and informed councillors from both sides. We aren't afraid to question or criticise or support our officers. I can even almost forgive Councillor Alan Khan's speech to Parliament when she said that Wandsworth didn't care for our unpaid carers. It's Sorry, easy point to of get intervention. Carried. Can I make a point of intervention? Of course. I, I never said that. In fact, I've always put on record publicly how much I value ones with carers. As you said, they do a fantastic job. So I'd like you to go back and refer to my speech because I never said I, that ones with doesn't I did, I think care for actually, their carers. I, I, I didn't. So I think it was the fact that you, you said that ones with council didn't look after the carers. No, I said that ones with council doesn't pay the London living wage to many of the agencies that it employs to contract up carers, which is actually true. But I'll refer to that in my point. But, but thank you to say that it's um, um, a pleasure to work with, with, with them councils on both sides. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, continue. So I'm sorry if I've, if I've misunderstood, but I did read it that she said that un unpaid carers were waking up worrying about whether they were going to pay for food or heating. But that's... It's easy to get carried away when you're Corbyn's poster doctor girl. And I know that you know it's not true. <laughs> At least she mentioned carers, which this motion shamefully omits. What it does contain is a back of a fag packet mishmash of platitudes and inaccuracies, which demonstrates a woeful, if not willful, misunderstanding of how Wandsworth runs its social services. I know that most councillors here share my obsession with looking after our most vulnerable residents and are uncomfortable about using them and their carers as a political football. So I'm sad that Councillor Jones couldn't come up with a motion which I could support. Please join me in voting against it. <laughs> Councillor Kirkchard. Thank you, Chair. Uh, sorry, Mayor. Um, right, this motion is about social care. And this means it's about the care that Wandsworth residents need to live their lives comfortably and safely. It's about the care Wandsworth residents need in order to be able to have basic needs met, such as washing and dressing, and to be able to continue to live at home. Most, but not all, of the people who need care are elderly, and many of them are supported by relatives who have often given up their jobs to look after an elderly person. And I would comment as well is, from my experience, one of the things that I've noticed with Wandsworth is if there is a carer in place, unfortunately there is sometimes a delay because the person is being looked after. I have had casework to this, to this effect. And I, that would lead me on to, as councillors, we will have all seen the issues for ourselves. And some of us will also have had to look after our own relatives. The 2016 CQC report, The State of Healthcare and Adult Social Care in England, makes very interesting reading. One of its key findings is that the market in social care is near tipping point as demand increases and the economic climate deteriorates. Social care workers are generally low paid and in areas like Wandsworth, a very high cost of living, it is extremely hard to recruit good workers. And Wandsworth also, we know, has recruitment issues with its own staff, such as social workers, prompting a reliance on agency staff. Wandsworth has 10 to 20 percent decrease in nursing home beds from the same report. Merton, for example, our neighbour, has a 10 to 20 percent increase, thus showing that they're thinking about the future when more people will be, need to be looked after away from home. Wandsworth also only pays £3.30 per hour for its care contract. The Association of Care Homes report, the home care deficit, says the minimum recommended price for social care is 16.30 an hour, so workers are paid the national minimum wage, and £9.3 an hour to pay the national living wage, rising to £21.40 in London. Our colleagues in Richmond pay more. According to the report, they're looking at £16.93. Councillor Clay asserted that cost doesn't come into it. I think these figures very show, clearly show that cost does come into it for Wandsworth. They also show that two key groups are, are shortchanged. Firstly and very clearly, Wandsworth residents who need care are not being given care at the level they deserve. 
It also shows that the care workers are not receiving a fair recompense for their work. And you will have all seen the studies that show that the better if care workers are paid better, actually the standard of care improves and everyone benefits. The current administration in Wandsworth prides itself on letting contracts that only consider the price and not the quality. This method is likely to put residents at risk and makes it likely that contracts we have will be unlettable going forward. In the CQC report, providers say... The contracts we have exited, and they have exited contracts, are those where simple maths show that a charge rate that the council wants to pay will result in a provider either not meeting the requirements of the national living wage or not delivering the services required by the user. It is not acceptable to put cost above providing good care for people who cannot look after themselves. It is not acceptable to run the risk of a CQC audit an adverse CQC audit showing Wandsworth to need serious improvement in its adult social services as happened with children's services. And I would pick up that Councillor Clay says that the uh, majority party has an obsession with its very vulnerable residents. Those who looked after children were our very vulnerable residents, some of our most vulnerable residents. Had we had a degree of obsession about what was going on with there, we would not have received the Ofsted rating that we did. I'm going to ask this council, as well as to support the motion, but there are some particular points I'd like you to consider. First of all, that we review the criteria for letting co-social care service, uh, contracts and add a, minim a minimum of a 20% rating for quality. I would also add that we should work very closely with St George's and other providers to investigate new ways of working. This was highlighted in the CQC report uh, in order to redesign some of the pathways. And I would specifically add that we use some of Wandsworth 500 million reserve to help support new initiatives. We could afford to do that. I think we should learn from other boroughs, particularly Richmond who have a higher social care quotient and seem to be able to pay better for it, to investigate a key worker scheme to retain staff in social care and to lobby the government to provide extra funds so, for social care so we remain a country that looks after its most needy compatriots. Councillor, could you conclude? I've just lost sentence. All this will improve Wandsworth's service to some of its most vulnerable residents and I urge you to support the motion. Thank you. Councillor Clay notes that we must balance the budget and that despite this, adult social services department has run a small surplus at the moment. And even Councillor Pritchard, I managed to find something uh, useful in her speech from my perspective, that she's right, we should look for new initiatives. I certainly don't deny that either, that is certainly true. These are all valid and useful points um, and useful in this debate on social care today and indeed going forward into the future. Rightly, as all have noted, this is something that is going to continue to dominate our lives and continue to dominate politics, both at a local and national level. Equally, I think it is important to note that the party opposites valid points written within this motion, although I must state my opposition to it in the round. I will, however, myself primarily address the points directed towards the executives themselves towards the end. In terms of point A, I can assure the Council that this internal audit has already taken place and was indeed done so in response to the concerns raised from the Ofsted report into children's services. I personally believe that this is a sign of the Adult Social Services Department taking a proactive stance on this matter and that the conclusions show that the weaknesses present in the children's services department are not replicated in adult social services. In terms of point B, this point was addressed in the last uh, overview and scrutiny committee, which is reported to this, uh, in this meeting's agenda, paragraph one of report two. Along with my comments regarding point A above, and again, um, 
I can assure this Council that a structure for addressing complaints and auditing external providers is in place and is robustly enforced. Point C links mainly, I think, to Councillor Clay's comment that we must statutorily balance the budget in this Council, whether we like that or not. Fundamentally, in these strained economic times, aligned now with the economic uncertainty of the UK's place in the world, it would be unwise to make a commitment to pay the London living wage. Already we have seen the financial impact of the former Chancellor's raising of the former national minimum wage, now renamed the national living wage, on staffing costs within the Council and wider external providers. It will be irresponsible to make this commitment in the current circumstances at this time. Point D. I can assure the Council that this borough adequately finances its adult social services to the required statutory level. We have taken advantage of the Council tax social care precept and this will boost finances for adult social care in future and I urge us to continue to do so. Equally, I know that Councillor Madden has tirelessly worked with central government and lobbied them to provide funding that adequately meets Wandsworth social services needs and that I'm sure he will continue to do so in future. In conclusion, this motion has valid points within it and there is no room for complacency with dealing with social care within Wandsworth and indeed within the country at large. However, as I've already stated, many of the motion's points have already been addressed or indeed are being addressed. It is on this basis, therefore, that I must argue for the Council to oppose this motion. Thank you very much. Councillor Jones. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not an expert in adult care, but I was a carer for 10 years for my dad who had Parkinson's disease and dementia. So I do know firsthand how important good quality care is when our loved ones become vulnerable and unable to look after themselves. I also know how important it is to be able to trust the system, the care system itself, to provide a safety net if issues arise. My dad wasn't in the care system in Wandsworth, but I've met several people whose parents are, or were, and their experiences of finding that safety net wanting do worry me. And, and hearing you say, we're not complacent, that's not the message that you get. That's, that's not what I'm hearing. I, I'm concerned when Councillor Clay says that um, vulnerable people who, who need help from the council will always get it because I'm going to talk about three cases that have, have, have come to me and I, I wonder if you're all listening to the constituents that come to you with similar cases. I can't be unique in, in hearing these stories. So Mrs F, she was a resident in one of the contracted out care homes in the borough. Her family complained about her oxygen mask and her alarm being left out of reach and about mice and strangers in her room. After about 18 months of unresolved complaints, so not robustly listened to, 18 months of unresolved complaints, Mrs F, who was 92 and, and a nurse, um, formerly a nurse, she was evicted from her care home by letter addressed to the care home that she lived in. So uh, the council did investigate the, her case. It did so because her family insisted, not because the council asked to investigate it, under prolonged pressure from the family, there was an investigation, and 21 of the 24 complaints against the council were upheld. So what that investigation found, for you who don't know about it, possibly, although you talk about how transparent the council is, is that there was poor reporting of safeguarding issues, poor record keeping, poor communication, poor handling of complaints, poor coordination between Wandsworth and, and its contracted out services, which is really important because that comes up a lot, and between Wandsworth's own departments. That, that actually resulted in, in ones with failing to respond to complaints for eight months, eight months of silence, during which time it was able to issue invoices to the family. So this failure to manage relationships between care homes, staff and service users obviously leads to a deterioration in care levels. 
The adjudicator's report into this case said, I'm quoting verbatim, verbatim, it was a no-win situation that did not afford the dignity and respect that should have been afforded. I've got other cases like this. Mrs A, her experience echo Mrs F's. So, Mr. A. Mr. A was a vulnerable elderly gentleman in the care of one of your contracted out services. His daughter complained to Wandsworth about poor care and she said, we were not listened to, we were not believed by the agency, we were not supported by Wandsworth. She summed up her experience by saying, the council doesn't manage the services with the agencies. The services become procurement led rather than service led. It is social care provided at arm's length. Um, and I've lost all trust and confidence in it. She added, which is important to hear, the social workers are sympathetic and helpful, but are let down by management and the processes don't always follow, follow back best practice guidelines. Mrs N. She was receiving home care from a contracted out provider. She has rheumatism, arthritis, high blood pressure, it's a long list. She became unwell at home under the care of her home care provider who didn't stay with Mrs N until the doctor arrived. She called the doctor but then she left. And by the time the doctor arrived, Mrs N was too unwell to open the door. The police were called. When they finally gained that entry, Mrs N was found naked and distressed at home. These are all true stories that, that have come to my attention recently. Her daughter told me, I have to chase things up with the council. They don't check if things are okay. They're not interested in elderly care. It is all delegated. So these cases have one important element in common, and that is that they all had an advocate. But there are those without advocates, vulnerable elderly people who don't have children who visit them and look after them. And if we're going to learn from the Ofsted investigation, and we have to, because as you say, it's our statutory duty, as it was to protect the vulnerable children that we didn't protect, um, then we must recognise that there is no room for this complacency that I'm hearing. So the audit, you talk about the audit, that's already done. 93 people... 43% of them were found to be only receiving basic levels of care or less and 16% did not meet expected standards. To sum up, now's the time to do a proper thorough audit. We've got the shared staffing arrangement, the, the departments are in flux, there's new people, new structures. Now is the opportune time to do this because we, I, we have to know that what I've told you about tonight there are exceptions, Could there isn't a systemic it? problem, and we can only find that out by auditing properly. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councillor Dodd. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, a very interesting three stories you told us there. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful, obviously, that that is exceptions to the rule rather than anything else. Um, but but obviously, obviously, it's something that, that, that needs to be looked into, um, as, as we do when anybody comes to us with various issues and problems. And we all get them in our surgeries. Obviously, we do. And we all do our best to try and sort them out um, with the system we've got. There are obviously um, things we can do to make things better um, in any uh, area of, uh, of life. So um, thank you for sharing those. Um, I would like to say that um, I agree with Councillor Critchard um, in her comment about innovation is very, very important in adult care, and of course it is, absolutely. I also agree with Councillor Carpenter when he said that provision of adult care is a sign of a civilised society. Yes, absolutely agree. We're, we're all on a bound to look after the people who are most at need. And so I just actually wanted to talk about... Um, a small area of adult care, well it's not that small actually sadly, um, which is mental health. And to briefly outline some of the things that the council does already with respect to those people um, with ment mental health needs in Wandsworth. Now mental illness, according to the annual public health report of uh, 2015, affects one in five of us in Wandsworth. So there's a good chance it's affected quite a number of us in this very chamber already, myself included. <laughs> Some groups are more at risk from poor mental health um, than others, of course. Um, and just to outline some, some brief areas briefly, um, people who are homeless, prisoners, and black, Asian, and minority ethnic groups, for example. 
And risk factors for poor mental health include unemployment, uh, again homelessness, and, and people who have poorer health and disability. So employment is a key protective factor against mental illness. And there are a number of local services which, um, which support people to get into, uh, into employment to assist with this, such as work match and housing into work. Um, and Wandsworth has actually one of the highest levels of employment of the London boroughs. And that doesn't mean that everybody is fully employed. Obviously, there are areas of deprivation in Wandsworth, which um, is where our mental health efforts are directed more towards. So being homeless uh, is one of the biggest risk factors for mental illness. And the number of people with common mental health problems is, is over twice as high uh, in people who are homeless. And the occurrence of psychosis is up to 15 times as high compared to the general population. For people living on the streets, this is even worse, as they are up to 100 times more likely to suffer psychosis than the general population. Now, th those are all facts and figures that are in our report from last year. Um, much of the regeneration and development going on in the borough will obviously op offer opportunities to help reduce mental health inequalities by providing increased and improved housing and job opportunities, and I'm talking about the Winstanley and York Road estates in Battersea and the Alton estate in Roehampton. Um, you probably all know, already know this, but Springfield Hospital is also being developed and will um, redesign its mental health services with improved and upgraded facilities, as well as development of residential housing, businesses, and open space for play and leisure opportunities. And all these are things that, that aid um, the well-being and mental health of our, of our um, residents. Now, Housing Into Work, a pilot scheme, when it was a pilot scheme, has helped 26 people find employment or training with the incentive of being prioritised for housing. And now the initiative is being targeted to a further 200 people. And the council's work match service placed over 196 residents with employers in the past year. And, and, is, and being based on the Alton Estate in Roehampton and Putney Heath Ward and on the Winstanley and York Road Estates in Latchmere Ward, which are all being regenerated, as I've just spoken about. This is to help ensure that alongside the provision of new homes of all ten years, there are on-site uh, apprenticeships, there are also jobs in painting, decorating, in office administration, and all of these things are supposed to be for local people. Um, another project I just wanted to mention is the Battersea Mentoring Project. Um, which is run by our local charity Storm um, and that was basically started in 2013 and it was a council funded uh, project to mentor 40 young men from the Stanley and York Road estates um, and these were people from black and ethnic minority backgrounds who were not in education or employment or training and it's helped much more people since then and now Storm has actually managed to secure further external training. Now, this uh, has been particularly good news in my view um, because young men are often uh, a group that are not given generally as much support and assistance as other groups. Now, um, whilst there's always more that can be done, as I've said, um, I think all this work demonstrates, um, and you'll find it on our website, set out on our website if you haven't already seen it, um, although I have to say it's not that easy to find. Um, but whilst all this work um, has been done, Councillor, it all demonstrates how, how the council is performing with respect to its health and well-being. Um, and for that reason, the reasons that my colleagues have already mentioned, um, I would vote against this motion. Councillor Ambash. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and fellow councillors. I will talk to my five minutes. I'm going to talk about four things in particular, the national context for health and care funding. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the professional reports from the CQC that Councillor Pritchard mentioned, but also the Association of Directors of Adult Care. Thirdly, I'm going to talk about what some older people have talked to me about this week and told me to tell you about. And lastly, I want to talk about some leading Tory politicians and what their views is about, about uh, this, this problem. So the context of this crisis for NHS and care has been brewing for some time. It's been much heralded, but it's not been addressed by government other than warm words, but little action. So the combination of the lack of funding for the NHS and for social care is a dangerous cocktail, particularly for older people, but for other vulnerable people. 
in these circumstances, I think the ones with council, ones with CCG and St George's, have done as best they could individually and collectively, but it's in the context of a sustained problem of lack of funding. <laughs> so this year's survey by the directors of adult care service on uh, adult care budgets across the country found that for the last five years, 4.6 billion pounds has been taken out in real terms of those budgets, a uh, real terms cut of 31% over the last five years. And in the current financial year, over half adult care budgets have reduced their services for older people and a third for people with learning disabilities. So they conclude their report, which was in June, about adult care budgets. We welcome the additional funding in last year's spending review, but the results of this year's budget survey confirm our view that these measures are too little, too late. We urge the government to address this, they said in June, and nothing's happened. So the CQC report, uh, talks about the state of care, of adult care across the country and has reached a tipping point. And the chief executive of CQC says, unless health and care systems find better ways to work together, I have no doubt that next year there will be more people whose needs are not met, less improvement and more deterioration. So I went and talked with some older people at a facility similar to the First Down project that Councillor Clay mentioned but in, in, in Putney and a number of them told me about the quality of care they received and the fact that they didn't feel always listened to so Alice who's 89 told me I can't rely on my home carers no one arrived on Saturday and they planned to send someone in as early as 7 a.m. on Christmas Day it's rather early um, then Sheila, who is 73, said, I have seven days a week home care, but have too many changes and often don't know which care is coming or a new care is coming. And Joan, who is 92 and lives in a residential care home, said, some of the carers are good, but many of them are too bossy. They told me that we must listen to the views of older people and they don't feel listened to and they particularly need high quality care that meets their individual needs and aspirations. So I think also we must listen to the views of people who talk with authority about the NHS and care uh, uh, from a national context and particularly for the members opposite. I have dug out some quotes for you. In the last week, Dr. Sarah Wollaston, MP, who's currently chair of the Health Select Committee, said, it's a huge disappointment that there's no extra funding for social care in the autumn statement. And we should raise taxes to achieve this if necessary. And two former Conservative Secretaries of State, Stephen Dole and Lord Andrew Lansley, also expressed disappointment about the lack of extra funding in the autumn statement. And Stephen Dole said, it is no good going into winter saying it's going to be all right when there are already queues in A&E and hospitals are unable to discharge people. So I'd like to say please support the motion and I'd also like to um, say it's really good to see Councillor Jim Madden back in the chamber who is going to speak next after me because we missed you last time Jim. Councillor Madden. I thank Councillor Ambash for his good wishes and um, it is with the help of the NHS that I'm here. I've been a mystery shopper at St George's on a number of occasions recently. <laughs> Although um, I'm told I'm getting better so uh, I should be grateful. <clears throat> good evening Mr Mayor. And looking at this motion I'm minded of South African gold miners who have to dig through tons and tons of rubbish before reaching a small nugget of gold. This can take a lot of time and effort. So it is with the motion and some of the speeches tonight. They're full of detritus and the gold nuggets are hard to find. It is a great pity because the fantastic work of carers in the borough and elsewhere is being grossly underestimated. And yet the party opposite seem intent on mixing in party political claptrap with what is in effect the equivalent of the gold miners' nuggets. 
It's good to see Councillor Alan Khan in the chamber this evening and note that she's due to speak after me. I hope that she's not going to rely on parliamentary privilege as she did in the House three weeks ago and speak honestly without playing to the gallery. Now for those of you who don't read Hansard every night, let me quote. I'm sure there's only one or two of you who don't. In Tooting, I have heard reports of patients sitting in their homes waiting for the knock on the door from a carer who has not shown up. Day after day, I hear of family members having to hide in their cars just to prove to the council that the carers are not showing up because the carers are saying, unfortunately, your dad has dementia. He did not remember that we came. This is not a scenario that the Director of Adult Care Services or her team recognised because I brought it to their attention. I thought she must be talking about another tooting. I know there's a Putney in Vermont and one in Melbourne and a Battersea in Alabama, so I looked up tooting. I could only find that it is a large crater on the planet Mars. Perhaps she's been listening to too many little green men. So perhaps I will ask Councillor Alan Khan to tell the Chamber what actions she took as to regards day after day I hear of family members sit in their car to prove that the, count, the carers are not showing up. Did she report this to the director or any member of her team? Does she have the details with her that she can pass anonymously to the assistant director now or is it another example of grandstanding? Councillor Jones highlighted three cases and what I would really like to know is what did she do about these? Point of personal it, explanation, I report all three of them to the council. Hang, uh, 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 hang on. Hang I haven't on, quite finished my sentence. The assistant director is at the back of the chamber and would be willing to reinvestigate them and report back to me with the details redacted, which I can then share with you. Uh, sorry, can I just interrupt? Um, are you prepared to give way? There's somebody over there who's speaking. Yeah, would, would, you, would you, sorry. Can you stand up? Is what, is it that, what is it you're offering to do for the three people who have already reported to their situations to the council? Sorry, are you giving way, Councillor Madden? Yes, I'm, I'm just going to okay. respond to Councillor okay. Madden's question. Thank you. What, what, what mm. I'm offering is I'm concerned that action was taken properly about these cases. They are very um, serious. Now, what I would like to know, and I offer again, is the assistant director is in the back of the chamber and he would be willing to reinvestigate them and report back to me with the personal details redacted on the circumstances of the investigation and I will take it further if um, his report back to me indicates that that's appropriate. So that, that could be part of an audit, not just the cases I report, right. but it, all the cases that are arising. Councillor Madden, Madden needs to carry I, on with his speech. Think, but back to the motion, Mr Mayor. I believe that we have no alternative but to vote against it. It is a pity that the claptrap outweighs the gold nuggets by 10 to 1. This first paragraph of the motion is acknowledged as council <coughs> policy and no more needs to be said. The same, part, same with the first part of the second paragraph up to highest quality. The remainder is political mischief making and deserves to be assigned to the waste transfer station. It is hard to see what the third and fourth paragraphs and some of the comments from Councillor Ambash have to do with Wandsworth per se. This is a national issue and the campaign for additional funding is being spearheaded by the LGA and by London councils and we are doing everything possible, as Councillor Lura said in his speech, to remedy the situation locally. The precept was uh, charged and is ring-fenced to adult care services I know that in Wandsworth it's a lot lower than other places because 2% of not very much is still not very much. Our local ministers have been lobbied and I'm sure that they speak to the Secretary of State whenever they can. We all know that the population is ageing, that cases of dementia are increasing dramatically. This is coupled with significant improvements in medical treatments from the cradle to the grave. The graph of doom published five years ago suggested that by 2020 the, local, the income local authorities received 
would just about pay for adult care services and nothing else. There was nothing at all to suggest that the doom mongers were wrong. Like some of my colleagues, I was staggered when I read this motion. I'm at a loss to understand what triggered it. Now, since taking up my current role, I've worked closely with the Adult Care Services Overview and Scrutiny Committee, and with a very, very few exceptions, perhaps counted on the toes of, a, of one leg of a three-toed sloth, it has worked as a cross-party group, intent on getting the best for the residents of Wandsworth, and long may it remain so. I reiterate that we greatly value our carers, and we will continue to do everything we can to make their task easier, and to look after the elderly and vulnerable throughout the borough who are a prime concern. Uh, members of the Council, I urge you to vote against the motion. Councillor Dr Alan Khan. Thank you very much Mr Mayor. It is, in, it is indeed a pleasure to see Councillor Madden enjoying improved health. I do despair though that I may never enjoy another council meeting without insult again. It has been three for three now since the by-election uh, in, in Tooting in June and it appears that the wounds of the, uh, of the Tooting constituency by-election are running deep. I'm, I'm proud to be a doctor, I'm proud to be a girl, um, but I've never been on a poster, to my knowledge. I'm about to share with you something very openly that I never hoped I'd have to do in the chamber, but I am so moved to by the suggestion from Councillor Madden, who I did have the greatest of respect for, that I was invoking parliamentary privilege in making up cases. The family that I'm talking about, where the gentleman received the care that he did and people pretended that he couldn't remember, was my father. My father, who lives in Fairsdown Ward right now, who has ones with carers, who do try very, very hard. But the journey that we went through on a personal level to ensure that people showed up when they said, when they, said they would, to ensure that he had his clothes changed when we had to go and pick him up in the middle of the night from the police station because he heard voices and felt that someone was coming to get him, when people didn't phone in to say that they'd attended, when people didn't sign the book, when people pretended that they'd been and said that he was too crazy to remember when we had to change care services three times, that's the family of which I speak. I never planned to share that before, but I have now. And there are officers whose names I can give you who have been dealing with this and investigating it. Sometimes we stand in this chamber and we debate issues of great contention, of which we are deeply divided. Sometimes we debate issues that test where we may be on the political spectrum. But fundamentally, in this chamber, I believe for the most part that regardless of the colour of our badges, I do truly believe we're here because we want to help people, because we want what's best for the people of Wandsworth and to do good. I've stood shoulder to shoulder united with many of the party opposite in recent local events in Parliament and here. Yes, Deffy, I'm smiling at you because it was a pleasure to see you last week. But tonight I believe this debate is one that can and must unite us, not divide us, please. This debate for me is about respect, respect for people and respect for the issue, respect for our older residents of Wandsworth, many of whom fought in the Second World War so that we can enjoy the liberty that we have today, respect for family carers who we know sometimes suffer so deeply with depression. We had a debate here where we found out that 19,000 carers suffer with depression in Wandsworth. And respect for the carers, in many cases, who do work for less than London living wage. Councillor Clay and Thomas and Amber and We should just take Dan a, a, a yes. small intervention. Yes, sure. As the carers' champion for Wandsworth, um, there are 19,000 carers in Wandsworth. I don't think they all suffer from depression. I think quite a lot of them manage very well and very competently. And obviously some of them do. But I think to state that there are 19,000 carers suffering from depression in Wandsworth is actually wrong. Sorry. Th 
thank you for your point of intervention. There are more than 19,000 carers now, and I'm really glad that they have a champion as, as competent as yourself, because I know you really do care deeply, but we do know that there is a great deal of depression, and we do know that there are so many people who despaired, just as, just as my brother and I have done, and felt, felt like they've had to leave their jobs. Like my brother has been in trouble with work so many times because the amount of time he's had to take off just to make sure that my father is, is cared for and that he eats. And this, this causes a lot of issues for our carers. So I'm imploring that we respect what life is like for them. I agree with Councillor Lua that there's no room for complacency. And again, I've enjoyed sitting on the committee with him and I know he cares deeply. But with an ageing population, the problem is upon us now. I do believe that if... If members cannot see the strain we're under, right here, right now, under our noses, perhaps all the residents in their wards are wealthy enough to afford private home care. Wandsworth, Councillor, what Wandsworth Council operates, as Councillor Jones says, a procurement process. And we do award contracts to people who have CQC ratings that are less than satisfactory. I have spoken to many social workers in Wandsworth who admit they struggle under current budgetary constraints. The council does try hard. I deal with council officers on a daily basis, on a personal level, but also very often on a professional level. And I know that they are so deeply committed. That's not what is being questioned here. I also understand that Wandsworth Council can only do what it can within the budgets that it's given from central government. And fundamentally, this is about us all today accepting and respecting cross-party that we have a duty to our most vulnerable. We have a duty to people in their later years of life. We have a duty to my parents, your parents, everybody's parents. And this is what I have been putting across wherever. And I will not be silenced. I will continue to be a champion for people who need a voice. And please, can we all just agree together to do the right thing? Thank you. The matter now before the Council is the motion moved by Councillor Jones and seconded by Councillor Ambash on adult social care. Agenda item 20. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. Those against? motion is lost 1834.